Hi guys, Squid here. Welcome back to another Diesel Railcar Simulator video. This time we are in the Class 122. Let's have a quick look at it. We've we'll got in that view. That is the Class 122. Uh, we are in expert mode. One second. Let me just uh, focus. Throttle down. Change up. One gear. Throttle back in. I'll explain what I'm doing in a second. I just need to keep up with what's going on. Uh, the Class 122, we are doing the 1711 service, which is a through stopping service number 59. We are on map 2, uh, which is the second map. The first video, the first look video was, was the route 1, map 1. This is map 2, the bigger one. Uh, we're in expert mode, so I've got a little bit more to do this time rather than just the kind of assisted easy mode. I've left all the uh, controls down here on the side because frankly doing it in expert mode brings uh, more challenges and I simply don't know this route so I want to make sure that we uh, we hit the numbers or try and hit the numbers uh, and stop at the platform reasonably correctly. Now we do have a lot more control this time because we are in manual mode or expert mode. Uh, we have control over the, the gear, we have control over the throttle, we have control over the engine RPMs and we can even reverse if necessary. Hopefully that won't be needed. So at the moment what I'm doing is uh, obviously we are uh, under the track speed so that's good. We'll continue to accelerate here. This is the RPM needle that we're looking at. When the RPM needle reaches the uh, the right side of the yellow bar which is the up position. Oops, I don't want to do that. Uh, at that point what we need to do is throttle into idle, uh, change up a gear and then throttle back in again. Uh, and you'll see me do that hopefully shortly uh, assuming we pick up some speed there's a slight gradient but uh, I don't know maybe it's just a slow accelerator it's a uh, the, the class 22 as you can see uh, is made up it's a, a two-car train uh, or I think it classes it as a four actually I can't remember uh, it's a mechanical gearbox a bit like the last um, the last one that we drove one second so I need to throttle back change up to fourth throttle back in and that'll bring the engine RPMs down. It works the other way as well. If the RPM gets down to here, then we need to drop down a gear. Just like a car really, I guess, you know, you just keep the RPMs in the right in the right part of the uh, the needle and you're all good. We are due to arrive at Ampton. Uh, we are stopping at Ampton, 1716. So pretty soon I'm going to idle the throttle and we're going to try and adjust our braking. Now the braking, let's talk about the braking side of things. We have full control. Uh, this is the brake pressure line here uh, and there's also a percentage down here. So what I can do is you use the E, D and C key. It might, might sound a bit weird, but the E key will release brake pressure. The C will apply it and the D will tap it. So what I need to do uh, pretty shortly once we start to idle, which is probably around about now, so we'll idle the, the engine RPMs will come down and uh, our target speed should start to drop and as soon as we get near that I'm going to apply better pressure so I'm going to press the C key uh, and then D will lock it in position or tap it at 21% uh, and we'll see how we get on with the speed need a bit more just to go 34% now obviously if I was if I removed these this target thing here I would have to estimate based on what I'm seeing uh, just like a real train driver would but right now I'll be honest with you I'm still trying to get used to these controls because they are different to train simulator which is obviously ingrained in my mind uh, okay we're slightly above let's get a bit more pressure now we're looking for the four car symbol which is here somewhere so release a bit of brake pressure and apply it again there we go Okay, I've overshot. I shouldn't have released. Never mind. We're stopping at the six. It's all good. Let's stop at the six. Why not? Uh, I'll release a bit of pressure, bring it back up to about 20% or so. It should be enough to hold it in position. There we go. That's fine. Just allows me to, to release more quickly. Now, I've got a bit of cleaning up to do. We need to bring up the gear to gear one. We can leave the reverser in the forward position, but we can actually move it. Like I say, we can go to... Uh, we can change that if you want to, but we're not going to. We just want to go forward for now. Um, so yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot more to handle right now. Let's have a look at the outside. It's all looking good. We arrived on time. We need to depart at 7:17, so we've got like a minute to talk about things. So this is a mechanical gearbox, like the last one, which means uh, I do need to change gears. Uh, we should be able to look at some other classes later where I won't need to do that. Right now, this is about 
you know, as taxing as it can get in terms of gear control. Uh, this is a reasonable route, I think, because it's not, you know, there's not too much going on. We've got these kind of stops every five, ten minutes or something like that. Uh, I'm hoping there's nothing more complicated than that. If we start, you know, changing track and, and coming up against red stop signs or all kinds of, I'll have more work to do. Um, so there'll be more concentration, but we'll see how it goes. I've not done this, this route before, by the way, so <laughs> don't be thinking I've done this and, oh, look how good I am. Nope, that's not happened. Uh, all mistakes are real. Now, uh, in terms of controls, W and S is what's controlling the throttle here. W to increase and S to, to slow down the engine. Uh, Q and A is what controls the gear. Q increases the gear number and A re reduces it. And E, so I hold E now, that's going to release the brake pressure. We're in first gear. Bring the throttle in. And it should begin to move. There you go. So if, you, if you're if you kind of a train simmer from the, from Dovetail train sim, you're, you're used to putting your hand on WASD. Uh, you can't really do that in this because it will completely mess you up. What I've done is I've turned my hands slightly sideways, so I'm using just my first two fingers. And I'm either on Q and A, W S, or E D C. Um, it seems to work well that way. You can, of course, remap the keys to your heart's content. One second. Neutral. Gear up. And throttle. You must remember to do that, otherwise you won't be having a ha the engine won't be having a happy time. Um, you can remap these keys to your heart's content, but I thought it best to try the defaults and at least use the defaults, that means that everybody listening to the video doesn't have to remap their keys as I might. So I'm using default setup. Uh, give it a go. Like I say, don't put your hand on WASD, just put your hand sideways and you'll find it a lot easier. Um, right, just watch the RPM gauge, speed is good. So throttle down, gear up. You start to get used to it the more you do it. One thing to note though, if you um, if you hold the right mouse button, you get the camera control. But while you're holding the camera control, your W, S, A, D, all that stuff won't work. And the reason is because when you're in camera control, when you hold down the right mouse button, W, A, S, and D actually operate the camera. So it can be a bit weird if you're moving the camera like this and then get a bit panicky when your throttle won't move. It's because you're holding the right mouse button. Has caught me out a couple of times, which is why I thought I'd mention it. Bit of an overuse of the WASD keys, if you ask me, but maybe I'll, I'll remap the camera keys to something else later, uh, something I'm not using. Now, the RPMs are not going up uh, because we've got a gradient climb going on, so we'll leave it in third gear for now. A little bit about the Class 122. First introduced, oh hello, first introduced in Gloucester, 1958. One sec, throttle down, and back in. So this is a 50s uh, rail car, first used in the Western Region branch lines, uh, and then I think it got used in Scotland as well. Um, so it got sent up north, used mostly for the little branch lines. Um, not quite, not quite uh, suburban, I don't think. Found itself out in the countryside mostly, kind of you know short short run passenger hops type thing uh, it's a single unit with a it has 150 brake horsepower engines on and cabs on each end so each side has 150 engine okay I think I just blew the engine up I'm not sure what I just did but something just broke Yep, something's completely died. I think I hit the... Oh, I passed the AWS, that's what I did. Let's see if we can uh, get out of this panic situation here. Let's drop into second. Yeah, so uh, when I'm in expert mode, I've got to handle the AWS as well. <clears throat> and because I was busy talking, I didn't press the space key to clear down the AWS, so the AWS kicked off. Luckily, I can reset it and carry on, it seems, so let's let's do that. Uh, lesson learned. That is something, when you're on the easy mode, that is something you don't need to worry about. It automatically clears AWS for you. Uh, but when you're on expert mode, 
you get to deal with that as well. And I wasn't used to, wasn't really paying attention, quite frankly, because I was too busy talking about the uh, the engine and stuff. There's 150 brake engine on, and on each cab and each end, which is what I was saying on the external camera, which is why I missed the early burst completely. Right, I'm just going to throttle it back there to idle. We'll just cruise in. We're probably going to be late now. That really bugs me, that right-click thing. Uh, so let's get ready to slow down. We need to break a little bit later because we're not going as quickly as we should be. Let's try 40% braking, see how that gets on. Look out for the four. Let's see if we can actually hit it this time. Let's release a bit of brake pressure. There it is. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to learn the behavior of the of the train like the weight of it and when it breaks and stuff so last time I've, I, I went past this time I pulled up short uh, oh we're on time amazing wow that's amazing I actually expected to be late from that one looks like this scenario has given us a little bit of a um, little bit of a break here in terms of times and stuff it's given us a bit more leeway uh, 1723 departure so yeah we've got um, it looks like it's a bit more relaxed. It's not like some kind of Japanese commuter run where you're measured, like if you're five seconds late, you get sacked, you know? <laughs> it's not like that. Crikey, I would not want that job. The pressure, oh my god. Where they measure tolerances in seconds and then they get pulled into meetings like, why, why were you four, four seconds late on stopping on this station? I'm sorry. <laughs> I looked out the window. I picked my Snickers off the floor. I mean, crikey, the pressure. Right, release the brake pressure. Uh, didn't clean up into first gear, so that was my bad. Not to worry, though. So, as you can see, I'm getting used to this expert mode. It is more challenging, but this is a good introduction, I think, this route, because it is... You get a few minutes break in between each station to catch your breath. Uh, having said that, I've just noticed the red aspect signal and the 25 mile an hour track speed coming up, so yeah. Rip me. This should be good. Hopefully you saw my first look video. If you didn't, you're probably wondering what the heck this game is. If you've not seen the first look video, I probably recommend that you go and watch that and then come back to this. Uh, if you're just looking for an overview of this game, the first look video is the best place to go. This is a continuation of that where we're, we're diving in a little bit more deeply now. I was wondering if we're going to go that way then. Little branch line. Was that an ADU? Oh, it was an AWS again, yeah. Okay, I managed to clear it. There we go. Okay, we'll stick it in neutral. Um because we're approaching a red aspect signal. Um, oh, one other thing I didn't mention in my first look video. This game has time acceleration, which I can show you hopefully at this signal. It's absolutely beautiful. Like what a godsend it is for people who make videos. Um, and even for people who are just slightly impatient because you know, you don't have to wait for the entire signal to clear down. That, that stuttering, that stopping to load content I hope they fix that because that's a common thing amongst games isn't it when they stream the next sector I think I can see a train up there and a red aspect signal there you see it we're due to arrive in Shelton Bryan at 1728 so I'm guessing we're going to be held up here for a minute the cool thing about this game is when you stop at a red signal it actually tells you why you're stopping it's, it's wonderful but then you can press page up and page down and accelerate time to the point where the signal clears and then you can carry on with your life. See, you know, in train sim, I have sat there for like nearly 10 minutes sometimes just waiting for, um, just waiting for the signal to clear. Okay, we're cruising in nicely. I hope they introduce some weather to this thing. It would be nice to see this, uh, I'm guessing we're going to have a merging train coming in from here. I guess we're going to have a train merging in from here. 
but it'll, it should tell us when we stop in a second. Assuming it doesn't clear like it just did, so we never know. Okay, let's get the acceleration going. Okay, we're a little bit low on the RPMs, you see, so we'll throttle back and drop a gear. And go back up. Because the needle was to the left of low, it, we, were, we were too low, basically. We are in too high a gear. The engine RPMs weren't enough to get going. Now we'll go back to second. You see how much more kind of workload it is? I mean, you think about a modern electric vehicle, you know? With just one handle to slide. Like, I want to go faster or I want to go slower. Compared to this stuff, it's easy mode. Oh, that right click to do thing is so annoying. When you don't want it, I might just dis try and find a way of disabling that. Because I normally try and move the camera around. If I accidentally do that, it's... Ugh. Let's clear down the OBUS. I recognise the sound this time. Okay, Shelton is where we're stopping. We have a red aspect signal, presumably at the end of the platform. So I guess that's why the AWS kicked off. To let us know that we have to stop there anyway, even if we're not stopping. Now looking at the clock here, I feel certain that we are going to be late arriving this time. And a lot of that's due to me fumbling my gears back there, I think. So, you know, it is pretty challenging. I will, of course, lose 10% score because of the target thing. I'll lose 10% because... Um, I've got the signal aspects on here. Uh, all the others are kind of 5 and 2%, so I'm not too worried about those. Right, let's get ready to just throttle into idle. We're nowhere near the target speed. How it expects me to have got to 60, I do not know. Okay, we'll drop into neutral. We can cruise this bit, so we get ready on the brakes now. Look at the house up there, look at that. Imagine living there, crikey. I wonder what came first, the bridge or his house? <laughs> Makes you wonder. Right, 46 target, we're doing a 30. So we'll go for like a, I don't know, 33% brake, something like that. Let's see how we get on. I need to look at my, at the end, I need to look at my report curve and see how close I was for Shelton Bryan to the ideal speed. Okay, let's get 30% braking going. Okay, it's coming down nicely. A bit more brake. It's the four mark there. Let's just hold that now. Looking good. Looking good. Touch more brake now. Not bad at all. That was better. So third time lucky. Not bad at all. Right, let's release some pressure. There we go. 20% 20, 20 we're on a flat surface though. We really don't need much brake pressure. Cool. We arrived late though. That's the only downside. Let's clean up. Let's get ready to rumble. There we go. Now when it's on an easy mode, it always does that horn thing when it sets off. Now I don't know if back in the 50s that's what they did. Whether that was always a thing. It's certainly not what they do now, but since it always does it when it sets off an automatic, it kind of implies that it, you're supposed to do that, because that's what they did back then. It's almost like it's almost like driving a car, this, and like dropping the clutch and changing gear. It's it's quite intuitive if you're a car driver, you know, but. Oh man, I can't. I wonder if my rail driver controller probably wouldn't work with this. 
Oh, look at that suspension. Look at it. Look at it. Is it working overtime then? It's awesome. Look at that. You see it go over that bump then? Fantastic. The whole cab just went up and down. Physics, it's lovely to see. Okay, ready for a gear change. There we go. Line looks fairly clear ahead. RPMs are okay, however, I think we're on a slight incline. What a great view. Look at that. 17.30 Sun being there, it looks like it's going for a standard 12 hour day As in it's not winter and it's not summer God, I seems to be struggling with this with route 2, like route 1 I didn't see these kind of frame stutters See we don't drop FPS but now and again it loads content and then it stutters a bit, but I didn't see that very much on Route 1. On Route 2, I'm definitely seeing it a lot more. Visible Vehicles 3. Visible Vehicles 2. I don't, I don't see these vehicles. It's not talking about cars, I don't think, because I've not seen any... I've not seen any roads, any vehicles on roads yet, I don't believe, so... It must mean other trains on the line. I'm going to leave that up there a second just to see what happens when it stutters again. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, all this is, you know, this is just simplistic graphics at the moment, but, you know, all of that can be improved. Those roads are super basic. It definitely needs to be improved. But the underlying engine is pretty good. I do wonder if they're ever going to make this whole thing clickable, though. Like, how far do they intend on taking this sim? They've got the physics here, they've got all this stuff moving and sound clicking and clacking, but, you know, are they going to allow anything like these switches and dials? Are they going to allow us to turn this? Click these buttons? How far are they going to take this thing? Are they going to allow us to get up and walk around? Open the door, open the window? They definitely need to sort the lights out, that's for sure. There, it's dropped to 50, look. That FPS just dropped to 50 and then it comes back to 60 as it's loading content. I, I've got a feeling that's a typical Unity thing. When Unity's loading content, I, I think they don't have much control over that. I've seen that somewhere else before. I think all these bridges are quite cool. So this whole thing is pretty nice at ground level. It's only when you start sort of zooming up that it looks a little bit kind of... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll just come back down here because it looks better. But I know they're working on better textures. Um, better textures on the trains as well. So I'll look forward to all that stuff. Red aspect ahead. Let's get ready for an ADBS. I was beginning to wonder if I need to worry about top speed, but we're going to have to idle shortly anyway. I think we'll idle now. We don't need to be accelerating towards this. Here's the marker, so the ADBS is going to kick off in a minute. Now that was... Oh, it's just gone green. I was going to say, that was the noise of a green. My God, that literally went to green as we passed over it. That's amazing. Right, Rogue Garston's coming up, though. So we are going to have to worry about that. Go for a trackside view. Listen to this. Listen. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, let's neutral that. We are slightly going downhill as well. And we're carrying a lot of speed here, so I need to get the braking right. I've not actually decelerated from 50 in this train before. Certainly not down a hill. That is a huge bridge. Look at that. Those archways. Crikey. Do you know, I actually, one thing I do love about um, some of the old bridges that you see in Britain on the trains, the amount of bricks, like, honestly, 
built in an era when Britain was was building everything with bricks. Like the amount of brickies that we had in the country. The structures, you look at these things. Like even just going into Liverpool Street, go into Liverpool Street Station and just look outside the window at the brick structures on either side of you. And it is just unfathomable. Just try to count how many bricks there are. It's actually incredible. Like, the people laid those bricks one by one. By modern standards, like, they wouldn't even... They wouldn't even consider doing using bricks now. Like that. Not a chance. Okay, I think we got this. I think we got this cool. We got this nailed. Look at this. Oh, that's beautiful. That's got to be about six or seven feet away. Tops. I wonder when they're going to make it that... Um, that you have to open the doors yourself as well. I like how the engine idles at 30%. And the diesel just comes out of these little stacks here. Okay, I think we're getting out of here. All right, we arrived on time, we left on time. That is beautiful. Next stop is our final destination, which is Portal 1. <laughs> what? It's a game. It's not a station. So, you know, just over the course of driving this scenario, the braking, we've managed to get the braking a bit better. Which is cool. I wonder if in real life you have to leave a gap between doing that, like if there's a, a point where you shouldn't re-engage this while that's... Like, when you engage the gear, should you wait before you bring that back? Otherwise you risk damage to the engine or transmission or something. Right, so I was going to demonstrate... Um, time acceleration. This looks like a decent time to do it. Let's get up into third gear and I'll show you time acceleration. There you go. So now, if you use the page up key, pay attention to this here. Sorry, that bit there. See times two? And you can go times four. Times three, times four, times five. You know, and just accelerate your way through the scenario. Which, you know, we've had this kind of thing in flight sims before. But I've never seen that in a train simulator. Very handy. I stopped that then because I could see the needle coming up. <laughs> I was like, I need to change gear. I need to stop accelerating time. I'm not changing gear while we've got time acceleration on. However, the RPM is currently holding because we're on an incline of 1.1% gradient. But yeah, you can just do that and take out all the dull bits of your scenery, if you want to. I don't know if it um, if it marks you down for doing it. I kind of feel like, from a purist perspective, it should give you a 2 or 5% reduction if you time accelerate. Just so that if you really, really want to get the maximum score, you have to do the whole scenery at full speed, at normal speed. That you know, but I don't know if it penalises you in any way. I presume not. It's a nice feature, though. Very handy. Right, we're approaching Portal 1, which is our destination. And then we'll get a breakdown of uh, how things went. I know for a fact we were late arriving and leaving one station, because I fluffed up the, uh, the controls a bit. So the RPM is like coming down but we don't really need to worry too much about dropping gear I don't think because we're getting look at that 2.3% gradient so it's kind of struggling fourth gear but we're almost ready to throttle and to idle anyway so it's no biggie oh that's interesting that's very interesting why did the scenario just end as if I'd got to the station is that because I accelerated time or something look it's taken my position here Arrived two minutes early.
So I'm thinking, I'm thinking there's a bug there. I'm thinking because I accelerated time by a couple of minutes, um, it actually thought that I'd finished the scenario. So I didn't get to, I didn't get to stop at the last station. <laughs> well, it's early access. Uh, I guess there's a bug here. Uh, hopefully the devs are going to watch this and notice this one. Uh, but in terms of how well we did, let's just ignore that. In terms of how well we did, I, I was deducted 26%. Um, let's see why we, let's see. Repeat gauge on screen, 2%, fine. Show target speed, 10%. Yep, yep. Show up, hill, down, hill, and do. Uh, so that usually adds up to, what, 25, 29. All right, 20. Oh, they're multiplied together, aren't they? In some weird way. AWS emergency breakings, definitely. Definitely, um, definitely penalized for that. Reckless driving, considerably exceeded target speed recorded every two seconds. I'm not really sure when I did that. If you look at my speed here, I never once exceeded the limit. So I don't really understand where that one came in. Uh, I was one minute late, I accept that. That was here. We knew that would happen. Uh, we also wondered about coming into Shelton, Shelton here. This was actually, I think this is my best performance, the last leg. So maybe not. That was pretty good, actually. Look at that. Although maybe accelerated too quickly off the get-go, but that wasn't a bad. Following the curve quite nicely, particularly on the deceleration. This was where I think the AWS kicked off here. And the same possibly here, was it? Um, but yeah. That is definitely a bug, look, because when I continue watching, it's broken. Let's jump into some other train. There you go, somebody else's train. Ooh, look at that. Very nice. Uh, so yeah, well, um, I don't know what to say. That was the class 122 on expert mode. I think things got better towards the end, but I think I just found a little bit of a bugette there. Uh, not to worry. That is it for me. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Take care, guys. Happy train driving. <laughs>